Federal Chancellor Olaf Scholz received the new NATO Secretary General Mark Rutte in Berlin today for his inaugural visit and warmly congratulated him on his new position. Scholz highlighted Rutte's experience and the trust that NATO has placed in his transatlantic leadership. Against the backdrop of the ongoing Russian attack on Ukraine, he stressed Germany's commitment to the security of the alliance, including by doubling defense spending and expanding the Bundeswehr. Schultz praised the alliance as a cornerstone of common security and looked forward to strong cooperation in the upcoming NATO summit in The Hague, which will take place in Ruta's home country. Secretary General, dear Mark, both of us have stood here at this lectern so many times, but today is something special for it is for the very first time that I have the great pleasure of welcoming you as the new NATO Secretary General. A warm welcome. And of course, once again, congratulations on your new office. NATO can consider itself very lucky to have such an experienced transatlanticist in times as such challenges uh, like these and to have him at its helm. And you can look forward to exciting an exciting term in of office. We have known each other, we've liked each other for such a long time, and I look forward to continuing our trusted and close cooperation. Dear Mark, the demands facing NATO are not inconsiderable. Europe's peaceful order is under a stronger and huger threat than it has been for many decades. For two and a half years now, Russia has been waging its uh, merciless war of conquest against Ukraine. With ever more brutal means, Russia is pursuing its imperialist objectives, has uh, shifted its industrial production to a war economy, and is massively rearming itself. All of that is something that NATO cannot and must not ignore. The Alliance's central promise is that it will defend every inch of allied territory. We owe this to the Alliance, we owe it to the Allies, and above all to the people living in the NATO member states, because they have placed their trust in us. Germany has therefore deployed German troops in Lithuania with our NATO partner country, thus strengthening the eastern flank of Allied territory. Germany will also contribute to the so-called NATO force model, contributing 35,000 men and women and more than 200 ships and aircraft. The new force model of NATO will provide for an operation and the readiness of these troops of only 30 days. That is our concrete contribution towards NATO. In general, the federal government has responded with determination to the change in the security policy situation. We've doubled our defence expenditure in the past seven years. This year, for the first time, we're spending 2% of our GDP again on defence. And we will continue to resolutely pursue this approach. With the 100 billion euro special fund, we are modernizing our federal armed forces. We are consistently increasing our armed forces in all areas. And the objective of the Alliance is clear, to be so strong that no one would even think of attacking us. NATO is and continues to be the foundation of our common security on both sides of the Atlantic. 75 years after its foundation, it continues to embody our transatlantic cooperation and our shared values, freedom, democracy and the rule of law. The citizens, the members of all NATO countries, benefit from this alliance. The Russian leader has not succeeded in driving a wedge between allies. The opposite is the case. Russia's war against Ukraine has brought the NATO allies even closer together. With Finland and Sweden, two countries have joined our defence alliance. The alliance is strong and it will continue to be strong. Dear Mark, both of us are convinced that we will have to further strengthen the European pillar of NATO. In the coming years, Europe will undertake major investments in the next few years in order to increase our defence capabilities and to strengthen our defence capability. It is about defending ourselves against any kind of threat. We also talked about Ukraine today. Germany is the second big, biggest supporter of Ukraine, second only to the United States, and we aim to continue that. As we, the G7, agreed in Italy this summer, we will provide a credit, uh, a grant to a loan to Ukraine 
up to the amount of $50 billion, allowing Ukraine to procure more weapons and armaments. That is indeed a very strong signal addressed to the Russian president, making very clear that Russia cannot win this war. It is high time that people recognize that this is the case and that Russia is willing to speak about an end to this terrible and senseless war that has already caused the death of hundreds of thousands of people. Dear Mark, thank you for this, your first visit in your capacity as Secretary General of NATO. I look forward to cooperating with you in this capacity and look forward to the upcoming summit next year in your home city, The Hague. Thank you very much indeed. Lieber Olaf, vielen Dank für den herzlichen Empfang here in Berlin. Olaf, thank you very much for the cordial reception here in Berlin. Uh, to be here. Um, we work together as friends during my time as Prime Minister of the Netherlands. And I am looking forward to continuing our good cooperation as NATO Secretary General. Germany makes a major contribution to our shared security. You are increasing your presence in the eastern part of our alliance. You are permanently deploying a full brigade to Lithuania. German jets patrol the Baltic skies. And the German Navy is assuming a leading role for NATO in the Baltic Sea for the next four years, protecting key supply and trade routes and critical infrastructure in the Baltic Sea. Germany now invests, as you said, 2% of its GDP in defense for the first time in three decades. This is important for Germany and for NATO. All NATO allies must invest more. And I trust that Germany will continue to step up. Dear Olaf, this achievement is also thanks to your personal leadership and commitment. Your historic Zeitenwende has made a big difference to the security of Germany and the strength of the alliance. And it sends a strong signal to Moscow that we stand united to defend our democratic values and the rules-based international order. As a former Prime Minister, I know that it is not always easy for governments to allocate funds for national defence and for aid to Ukraine. But both are crucial for our collective security. So today, indeed, we also discussed our continued support to Ukraine. Germany is the biggest European contributor of military aid. Your support saves lives on the battlefield every day. And you host in Wiesbaden NATO's new command for security assistance and training to Ukraine, which I visited a couple of weeks ago. The NATO command for Ukraine is integral to the wider NATO Washington Summit package for Ukraine, which also includes the pledge of long-term security assistance and support for Ukraine on its irreversible path to your Atlantic integration. If Putin wins in Ukraine, he will not stop there. Russia is conducting already an intensifying campaign of hybrid attacks across our allied territories, interfering directly in our democracies, sabotaging industry and committing violence. All of this to weaken us and to sow division. This shows that the shifting front line in this war is no longer solely within Ukraine. Increasingly, the front line is moving beyond borders to the Baltic region, to Western Europe, and even to the high north. But NATO stands ready to deter and defend against these threats. We are investing in our capabilities across all domains, land, sea, air, space, and cyberspace. We are working with industry to ramp up production and to accelerate innovation. Your defense industry here in Germany is crucial to the security of Europe and the defense of Ukraine. In Bavaria, American and European companies are partnering with NATO support to produce 1,000 Patriot air defense missiles in a new factory. This is the transatlantic defense industry at work, providing capabilities and jobs on both sides of the Atlantic. The German arms manufacturing Rheinmetall has just inaugurated the first factory in Ukraine, with a second facility nearing completion soon. And Rheinmetall has significantly increased ammunition production since 2022. 
We must keep up the momentum to keep our one billion people safe. So we are stepping up support to Ukraine and we are working more closely with the European Union and other like-minded partners around the globe. Chancellor, lieber Olaf, thank you again for hosting me here in Berlin. Thank you for your leadership in these uncertain times. And thank you for Germany's leading role in the alliance, in NATO. Again, thank you. Thank you. A question addressed to the Secretary General. Are you concerned that with Germany and the United States, you might be confronted with two country, important member states of NATO that by midweek would enter a phase of political instability? And Chancellor, given the situation and the challenges that Europe is facing these days, would you say that it is response that it is uh, responsible to um, say that Germany is not no longer a model of stability? Uh, allied nations. Um, but what I know is that this Chancellor and this country uh, at this moment is one of the biggest troop contributors to NATO's operations and missions. I commit, is, has committed to strengthen our deterrence and defense in the Baltic and North Sea, is working closely with other NATO allies in, deve in developing new capabilities. You have just signed a new agreement with the United Kingdom. With Norway, you are working to get regional hubs to monitor underwater infrastructure. And the German Navy is assuming a leading role for NATO in the Baltic Sea for the next four years. So these are all examples that under the leadership of this government, um, this country, uh, Germany, is really taking a leading role within NATO. And whatever happens with national politics, and again, I'm not commenting, uh, this will continue, I know, with this chancellor. Uh, and on the American elections, whoever wins those elections, uh, we will work with Kamala Harris, we will work with Donald Trump and make sure uh, that the alliance stays united. I have no doubt, because it is in our interest, it is in our interest here, but also in the United States, because they are not in this to not repeat the mistake after the First World War or withdrawing from Europe. No, they are in this because they know that if Putin would be successful in Ukraine, that at that moment an emboldened Russia is on our eastern uh, flank and uh, will present a direct threat to NATO territory. Um, and that is why they are involved in Ukraine, that is why they are involved in NATO and an integral part of the alliance. The Regierung wird ihre Aufgaben erledigen. The government will fulfill its duties. I am the Federal Chancellor in serious times. We will have to face up to serious challenges. It's about business, about jobs, it's about technologies, and that is what we're talking about and discussing these days. Coalition governments uh, are not only uh, exclusive to Germany, we have them in other countries too, but the government has been elected to office and will attend to its duties. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a question that I'd like to address to both the NATO Secretary General and the Chancellor, again, Ukraine, if I may, and the troops of DPRK that are now engaging on the side of Russia and thus intervening in the combat, in the battle. I'd like to address a question to both of you. Given the fact that Ukraine now has to wage a war against two countries, uh, wouldn't you, shouldn't we consider increasing once again our efforts? Russian troops in the eastern part of Ukraine are advancing, we've heard, despite Ukraine's best efforts. And Chancellor, if I may come back to the domestic situation just briefly. You mentioned pragmatism, the need for pragmatism. The chairperson of the SPD said this morning that the paper presented by Mr. Lindner does not contain a single point that could be implemented in a, with the Social Democrats. Is that your view too? And on what is the base on basis on which you can engage with the uh, FTP? Korean troops being deployed in Russia against Ukraine. Uh, this is a significant escalation, and it, it, it makes us even more focused and determined uh, to make sure that Ukraine has what it needs uh, to fight off uh, the Russians, uh, including uh, the North Koreans. Um, Germany is, has now spent two, 28 billion in military aid 
going into Ukraine. And it's with that sum, uh, the second biggest contributor uh, in Ukraine, next to the United States. And we have to continue doing this. We have to make sure that our defense production is ramped up. Uh, we have to make sure that Ukraine can prevail, that Putin will not get his way in Ukraine. Um, and then on North Korea, we are working closely, as you know, with the Indo-Pacific partners, of course, with the Republic of Korea, so South Korea, Seoul, but also with Japan, with Australia, with New Zealand, uh, to make sure that we are able to also with this new development uh, to do everything we can to keep not only the Euro-Atlantic but also the Indo-Pacific safe. Um, because we know that Russia is working here together not only with North Korea, China is providing dual-use goods and is helping with sanctions circumvention. And of course we know that Iran uh, is involved uh, in helping Russia with the war effort. So, this motivates us to step up, to do even more, um, because you are absolutely right. Uh, this is a very serious development and an escalation. I support what the Secretary General just said. It is important that we provide the necessary assistance to Ukraine and continue to do so. Germany has shown itself, proven itself a trusted partner that does not limit it itself to words. And some of the announcements that have been made now have to be implemented. That would be a welcome thing to happen. And I would, I think, contribute towards changing the scenario in Ukraine, because then they would be able to rely and to resort to the funds that they need to defend their own country. Now, given the situation here at home in Germany, I insist on what I said, the government has to attend to its duties, we have to show pragmatism, we have a basis for this, we have the coalition agreement uh, that has been negotiated and agreed, we have set in motion the budget procedure for a new budget, we now have to take the necessary decisions given the latest economic developments, but also given the need to submit further proposals to the parliament. Um, so to allow us to conclude negotiations on next year's budget. As I said, it's important that we continue to focus on jobs, on the economic development of our country, and this is why I, and I did not talk to the public uh, or to the audience, but um, it's important that given the many discussions we've already engaged in in the past with representatives of business and industry, that explains why I once again um, uh, had a meeting with representatives of industry and business, because we are in a difficult, globally difficult economic situation as a consequence, amongst others, of Russia's war against Ukraine. This has had an effect on prices of the price of energy and energy security, but we have to attend to the modernization of our economy while supporting Ukraine. These are all tasks we have to address that can be solved and need to be solved, and we have to do whatever we can, and that is what they expect of others to do. No microphone. Yeah, vielen Dank. Um Thank you, Chancellor. I too would like to um, come back to Ukraine. Uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, um, mentioned uh, the issue of uh, Ukraine's accession to NATO, that that constituted uh, uh, an issue for him. Could you perhaps explain why that perspective for membership uh, now or at a later point in time for Ukraine? Would you see an alternative um, neutrality for Ukraine, or is there any other perspective? Because that might play an important part in the negotiations that we might engage in at some point in time with um, of, uh, the demand for NATO membership for, uh, for Ukraine. Thank you. We have a decision in We've taken a decision in Vilnius, and after that in Washington. Um, in the light of the present situation, and I don't see any new need for further decisions. The situation is the same, identical to what it was like when we took these decisions. What is at stake now is that we proceed in a practical fashion, ensuring in practical ways that Ukraine does not run out of weapons and armaments. We're engaging in that process. We've repeatedly made that point, and we continue to provide that perspective to membership. But, um committed to the irreversible path to NATO membership. Since Washington, we are working on the command in Wiesbaden. We are working on the $40 billion pledge. 
Many countries are providing military aid into Ukraine, with the US and Germany in the top two. And many countries have closed bilateral security agreements with Ukraine um, on a number uh, of issues. This altogether constitutes the bridge to NATO membership in the longer term. And I'm absolutely convinced that one day Ukraine will be a member uh, of NATO. Now, the victory plan has been put forward by President Zelensky. I think it's always helpful when also Ukraine itself makes clear how, say, how they would see the next steps uh, developing. But what I would say in answer to your question, when you look at everything happening at the moment, that bridge is now being built in a very practical uh, way with, uh, again, uh, Germany and the US uh, leading the way. Vielen Dank.